In this episode, we'll be installing a complete state-of-the-art dual battery system. It'll keep our hot stuff hot, our cold stuff cold, and help us light up our world. Now we're putting it in our Toyota 4Runner, but this system will adapt to virtually any vehicle. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. This is Wanderlust Overland. Overland. Get the Let me see it. No, get your own. I want to see No, get your own! We need a reliable source of energy to power our fridge, some work lights, charge our camera batteries, even when the engine isn't running. And it is crucial at that time when the engine isn't running that no power is drained from our starter battery. We need this engine to start in the morning when it's time to move out. We also want a system that possesses the latest technology, but is still simple enough to be extremely reliable. Also, it needs to have safeguards in place to protect our rig's electrical system, just in case there's a short or an overload. On this project, we enlisted the help of a company called Overland Power Solutions. After talking over our wants and needs with them, they've engineered a system that's super reliable, will perform everything we need it to do, and won't start our rig on fire. They also built the wiring harness. The cables and connectors are perfectly sized for the amount of power that'll be flowing through them. This is the heart of our system. It's a Red Arc DC to DC charger. Why a DC to DC charger instead of an old fashioned relay or solenoid system? Most newer vehicles have what's called a smart alternator. Because of this, a simple battery isolator won't allow the second battery to come to a complete charge. Only about 13 to 13.8 volts instead of the full 14.8 volts for an AGM battery. Now that might not sound like a huge difference, but in battery speak, that's huge. The good health of any battery depends on it coming up to its full charge and not dropping below a certain charge. In the video description below, we'll provide a link to a video that can describe it far better than we ever could. But watch this video all the way through before clicking on it. So basically how this works is after you start your engine, the alternator will charge up the starter battery back up to its full charge and then switch over to charge the secondary battery and maintain that charge. When the ignition is turned off, it completely separates the two batteries and it's all done automatically with this controller. For our application, we're using a hybrid or dual purpose battery. It has all the benefits of a deep cell, but it still has the cranking amps necessary to do an emergency jump start. Now the tray we're using to mount our second battery here is from C4 Fabrication. It's extremely strong and incredibly easy to install. Now it utilizes the two studs coming up from the fender well, a bracket that goes to a stud on the firewall, and then two bolts going into existing nuts on the fender. Now the base plate for our charger, which doubles as a battery hold down, is a piece of half inch ABS that we found on Amazon and then cut to fit the top of our battery. Now this right here is our circuit breaker. This is gonna protect our alternator and starter battery just in case something goes horribly wrong. What could go horribly wrong? Nothing, nothing's gonna go wrong, trust me. So this is how the wires coming out of the charger get hooked up. Red wire connects to the starter battery through the circuit breaker. Brown connects to the second battery positive. Black connects to the second battery ground post. Yellow is for our future solar panel. For now it's just dead ended. Now there's no need for any additional solar controller or anything. It's all taken care of inside the Red Arc charger orange wire tells the controller what type of battery it's charging depending on where it's hooked up positive negative or in our case with an AGM 
It stays unattached, just dead-ended. Green. This is for an optional dash-mounted LED that comes on when the second battery is charging. This blue wire will go through the firewall to the fuse box under the dash. There will tie into an ignition on circuit. This will tell the charger when the engine is turned off and it will completely separate the two batteries. All right, as you can see, maybe, we have the cables connect, that connect the two batteries run up against the firewall, zip tied up nice and tight. We don't have anything connected yet. Uh, we're gonna wait until the very end to do that. We do have this wiring harness that comes from our charger. This goes behind the dash. It's gonna power that, uh, that indicator light that we talked about earlier. And it goes to the ignition on circuit in the fuse box. Now to get it through the firewall, down here, there's a rubber grommet, and we're just gonna simply poke a hole in it and run the wires through it. Okay, so there's that grommet that we wanna get the wires through. This is under the dash, by the way, if you can't tell. Um, to fish it through, we're gonna take a piece of wire and poke it through the hole, and then tie our wires to it underneath the dash and pull them through instead of pushing them through. Okay, so here's that little indicator light. What we did was we found this uh, on Amazon, I think. We'll, we'll uh, put a link to this in the description below. Um, we just took out the blank out of the dash, drilled a half inch hole, popped that in there. And it's just held in by a little bit of hot glue. So here's that green wire we brought in from the uh, DC DC charger and a ground also I brought all the way from the charger. Uh, you probably didn't have to, but we did anyways. And we're just gonna do a simple butt splice on these. Now to tie into an ignition on circuit in the fuse box, we're actually just using a simple uh, add a circuit, um, buy these anywhere. And we found a fuse in there that says uh, ignition on the fuse box cover. So we're gonna tie into that and hopefully that works. So this is how we have our secondary battery wired up. It starts with the positive cable coming from the starter battery going into the circuit breaker, comes out of the circuit breaker with the red wire, goes into the charger, comes out of the charger with the brown wire, hooks up to our positive terminal on our secondary battery. Uh, the ground from the starter battery comes in, goes directly to the post on the secondary, and then it comes out of there with the black, goes into the charger. And this cable right here is actually a chassis ground, and it grounds to the body right here using the same bolt that we bolted the uh, battery tray in. Wiring up the starter battery couldn't be simpler. It's just you hook up the positive to the positive, negative to the negative, and very soon we are going to change out our battery terminals because this i don't like this we have uh, a bunch of stuff going in here we have our relay panel wired in we have our winch wired in got our headlights uh, we're, we need to clean this up so we're going to get some different terminals really soon now we have pretty much everything done under the hood we even have the two batteries wired together no sparks nope now the next thing we need to do is take these wires and put them through to the back so we can install this panel. Okay, here they come.
we're sending both positive and negative cables back to our outlet panel. Now we'll just run these cables along the frame, making sure that we're nowhere near the exhaust or anything that moves, and uh, zip tie it down real good. Well, before we call it quits last night, we got the cables run all the way to the back. We encased it in split wire loom and zip tied it nice and secure up to the frame. Toyota was nice enough to put this big rubber stopper right where we want the wires to come up into the cabin. To make it easier to put in and take out the outlet panel, we added an Anderson plug on the main cables. An Anderson plug is a heavy duty plug made for large gauge battery cables. Here is the power outlet panel that will be going in the back. Alright, to start, our main positive cable from the battery comes in to another circuit breaker. That will also serve as our main power switch back here. Then it comes out of there and goes to what's called a safety hub. That's a fancy name for a fuse box. And we put this up on these stilts just so we could fit the outlets and switches uh, underneath it. From here, the power gets distributed to our outlets, our high-speed USB chargers, and the switches that we'll use for future add-ons like lights, water pump. Hot tub? Since there's a small amount of power lost by going through the 12-volt outlets, Overland Power Solutions thought it'd be a better idea for us to wire our fridge cord directly to the fuse box. This is just a typical volt gauge. It tells us how much voltage there is here at the outlets. This is our monitoring system. It's going to tell us everything we want to know, how much power we're using, how much we've used, how much is left, and a bunch of other stuff. It gets wired into the ground side through this shunt. From there, the battery ground is sent right to the fuse panel. A data cord connects the shunt to the gauge itself. And this little wire right here provides a little bit of positive power from the fuse box. The coolest thing about this monitor is that it's Bluetooth. We can bring up all that information on a phone or a tablet while we're up front driving. The charger itself also has information it can tell us. This set of LEDs tells us what type of battery the charger set up to charge. With our AGM profile, A is lit. Solar and vehicle just tells us where the charge is coming from. The status LED tells us what stage the charger is in, either boost, absorption, or float. Boost happens when, after the starter battery comes up to its complete charge, the red arc will then throw the maximum amount of charge at this battery. After a short time, that charge will reduce down and turn into absorption phase. Then, once this battery comes up to its complete charge, it then goes into float, maintaining that charge and powering our accessories. And if there's ever a problem, they'll blink an error code that you can look up in the owner's manual. Now we made the panel itself out of 8th inch ABS plastic cut to fit this opening right here. To secure it in place, we simply made some aluminum brackets, uh, pop riveted to the panel itself, and then we're going to use these automotive fasteners to uh, bolt it on with. If you don't want to mess around with all this custom DIY stuff, Overland Power Solutions can wire it all into an electrical box panel, which you can then bolt on to a storage panel like this one made by Orange Box Fabrication. All you'll need to do is just plug it in. Yay! Still no sparks! The monitor needs a little setup info entered. It's all spelled out in the owner's manual. Okay, we're going to turn it on. And the green light comes on. So that tells us something's working. It says the state of the charge is at 
voltage is at 13.16. And that's voltage output? Yes. Yep. Oh, the fridge just kicked on. Output current is negative 3.5 amps. That's what the fridge is drawing right now. Power is at negative 51 watts. I don't know what that means. Consumed amp hours is negative one. Huh. And time remaining says 18 hours and 11 minutes, but I think it's because we don't have enough history yet. Uh, and that's it. What's, what does the history say? There's a, also a history on another page. But since we don't, we but just what installed it. What would it, it say? Uh, you have your glasses on. It gives the deepest discharge, the average discharge, the last discharge, and the cumulative amp hours drawn. Uh, then it says for energy, the discharged energy and the charged energy. For charge, oh. it gives the total charge cycles, the synchronizations, the last time since the full charge, and the number of full discharges. Cool. Then it gives the battery voltage, the minimum battery voltage, the minimum starter voltage, the maximum battery voltage, and the maximum starter voltage. And then it has alarms too for low voltage alarms and high voltage alarms. So you can turn an alarm on. I guess so. Huh. It's been parked and not driven at all for 20 hours. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, the fridge and the freezer are both at the same temp that we set it at. Um, steaks are still frozen. Ah, beer is still cold. When we shut it off, it was around 13 and a half volts. Yep. Now it's down to about 12 volts. Okay. We're uh, at 54%. At state of charge is 54%. So we're going to keep experimenting with this, testing its capabilities and limitations, and learning the app a little bit better. Uh, for any updates, tune in to us on Facebook and Instagram. And before you leave, be sure to subscribe. We forgot to thaw out the steaks. What are we going to have for dinner?